am I glad to see you. I've just run into something I never saw before. Something new? Well, let's have a look, Tom. Here, this piston, Tech. Looks like somebody held a blowtorch to it. What in the world do you suppose caused that damage? Pre-ignition, Tom. A pure and simple case of pre-ignition in one of its worst forms. Pre-ignition? Well, the owner of this car never said anything about the engine sounding off. He didn't have to, Tom. Tech was referring to a form of high-speed pre-ignition that you can't hear. The only time we know a car has it is when we see damaged valves or pistons like this. It's a good thing this doesn't happen very often. However, I've saved some damaged parts from a couple of cases this past year, so I could go into the subject of pre-ignition with you. A good idea, Joe. Every mechanic ought to know that story. Then he won't confuse pre-ignition damage with a strictly mechanical condition. Okay by me, fellas. I don't mind you making an expert out of me. Well, we'll do our best, Tom. So remember, we're talking about something you can't hear. The engineers call it inaudible pre-ignition. And to cure it, you've got to do more than just replace the damaged parts. It's important to correct the cause of high-speed pre-ignition. Usually an overheated spark plug's at the bottom of the trouble. I see. But what makes the plug too hot? Two main causes, Tom. First, the wrong heat range plug might be used for the type of driving an owner does. Second, the ignition timing might be incorrectly set so that it's advanced too far. Before you get too far into correcting the cause of overheated plugs, how about a good definition of pre-ignition? Okay, Tech. Here's my version. By pre-ignition, we mean the air-fuel mixture in the combustion chamber is fired before the spark plug has a chance to do the job. Here's how that can happen. When timing is advanced too far, or the plug heat range is too high, temperatures and pressures in the chamber gradually creep up under prolonged high-speed driving. Eventually, the lower end of the plug porcelain can get quite hot and ignite the mixture before the ignition spark jumps the gap. Once this pre-ignition starts, the heat generated can burn and melt the metal engine parts. Those plugs can overheat if they're not tightened properly. Also, on six-cylinder engines, the gaskets might be missing, or on eights, the spark plug tubes might not be seating evenly. Right, Tech. And any one of those plug conditions makes it hard for the plug to conduct heat away from the tip and to the cylinder head. Well, that figures, Joe. What else makes the plugs overheat? Well, a chipped porcelain tip won't conduct heat away from the electrodes, and both will start to overheat. Also, a plug extending more than one thread into the chamber is bad. The thread edge will glow and fire the mixture. I've got a good picture of the silent pre-ignition that burned this piston all right. But what's going to keep it from happening again after we repair the damage? Two things, Tom. First, we'll pick a plug with a proper heat range for this driver. Second, we'll reset his timing very carefully. Uh, before going into that, I'd like to talk about a type of pre-ignition you can hear. For instance, there's a pre-ignition caused by excessive engine deposits, and it pings away like a tiny blacksmith. All engines have a normal amount of deposit accumulation, which usually levels off after about 5,000 miles. Yeah, man. Those excessive deposits can really ring a bell sometimes. But Joe's got a good way to see if a car has this deposit caused pre-ignition. Oh, yeah, Tom. To test for pre-ignition, take the car out on an open stretch of road, then accelerate at wide open throttle until you hear the loud pinging. In most cases, the pinging will sound off from 10 to 30 miles an hour, sometimes up to 40. And if that's what you hear, quickly turn off the ignition. If the engine keeps on firing, it's a sure sign of deposit pre-ignition. And Tom, when you finish that wide open throttle test, Take your foot off the accelerator before turning the ignition on again. If you don't, you might blow that muffler to bits the next time you start the engine. Zowie, I'll sure watch that, Tech. Now, I've got a question for Joe. On that road test, suppose the engine stopped firing after cutting the ignition. What would be causing that low-speed pinging? Detonation, Tom. Uh, that's another knock condition we'll want to talk about. Uh, detonation is an ignition of the mixture after the spark plug fires. It doesn't ping as loudly as pre-ignition, uh, nor is it usually as serious a condition. 
As soon as we clear up pre-ignition, we'll cover detonation in more detail. Okay, Joe. How about other tips, then, on how I can detect pre-ignition? Well, keep in mind that deposit pre-ignition is a very loud pinging sound, usually heard at low speeds. <laughs> that I've heard. And deposits are mainly the cause, right? They're the most common cause, that's for sure. Deposits act as insulation and won't let the cooling system dissipate the heat fast enough. This, of course... Raises combustion temperatures, causing hot spots in the chamber. Some of the deposits glow, stay white hot, and keep firing the mixture before the plug can do it. A poorly fitting metal head gasket can also cause pre-ignition. Gasket edges sticking into the chamber can become white hot, and whoosh, there's pre-ignition. I'm a lot clearer now on what pre-ignition can do and the things that cause it. What's the best way to tackle a correction? Well, a thorough check of timing is the best place to start. And always check timing with the engine at normal operating temperature and idling at 475 to 500 RPM. So timing's the number one base to tag. You can't stress it too much, Tom. Suppose we concentrate on the matter of timing for just a minute. Manufacturer's specifications always list a point at which ignition timing should be set for each model. But don't forget... There's an allowance of four degrees, plus or minus, from that specified setting. That four-degree cushion, either way, allows for variations in manufacturing tolerances and in operating conditions. As far as operating conditions are concerned, we all know the grade of gasoline isn't uniform throughout the country, the altitude certainly varies, and the way each car is going to be driven isn't the same by a long shot. All of these things affect timing requirements. So that's why we should take advantage of that plus or minus four degrees. It lets us tailor timing according to local conditions and according to the way we know the owner is going to drive the car. It puts you in a position to service each car so it will deliver top performance for each particular type of operation. I can see why staying within specifications is important to performance. But let me ask this. When setting timing on a car that's had pre-ignition, should I do anything special? Yeah, Tom. There is a particular method to follow on a case like that. And in fact, any time you check and set ignition timing. But somebody better turn this record, Joe, before you go into that special timing setting technique. When you go about setting the timing, Tom, first adjust the distributor so the engine will fire four degrees before the specified setting. You got that? Four degrees before. Okay. But why, Joe? We start with the advanced setting in an attempt to give the owner the most power from his engine. Okay, I get you now. Then take the car on the road and test it for spark ping during a hard acceleration between 10 and 30 miles an hour. Now, if it does happen to ping, retard the timing setting about 2 degrees and road test it again. Keep doing that until you reach a point where the car will give good performance with little or no ping under hard acceleration. Back in the shop... Recheck the timing with a light. See if the setting you've settled on is within the four-degree variation allowed from the timing specified. Yeah, Tom, and here's an important point. Stay within specifications. Even if the car performs better and is free of ping with timing advanced more than the allowed four degrees, never let a car get out with timing advanced that far. Tex right. That's because... Too great an advance can overheat and cause that inaudible pre-ignition we've been talking about. Okay, Joe. I think I've got her straight now. And just to keep you straight, my boy, all the timing specifications you need are in this reference book. Be sure you look them up. Will do, Tech. Cross my heart. Now, Tom, getting back to this case, we'll be sure the timing is set right. And because this owner is a hard driver, we'll install a set of cooler plugs to tailor the engine to his driving habits. Okay. Suppose I try all the corrections suggested so far, and the engine still has pre-ignition. Well, in that case, Tom, you'd better remove the cylinder head for a close look inside. The combustion chamber of a cylinder that's been pre-igniting will have a cleaner, drier carbon look than the others due to the excessive heat. And in most cases the spark plug porcelain will be blistered or burned away. All right. What else? Look for cracks, then, and protruding spark plugs or gasket edges. Finally, clean all deposits from the chambers and the tops of pistons. 
You can also check the valves. They might need attention. Replace any burned or concave valves. Install the new head gasket, and be sure it fits properly. Then, reinstall the head by tightening the bolts in their proper sequence and to the specified torque. That about covers what you can do internally. Okay, Joe, I think I've got the pitch. Fine. Now, detonation is the other combustion knock condition we wanted to talk about. It can damage the engine, too, but that's so rare we don't worry too much about it. And just by way of reminder, Tom, remember that detonation is a combustion knock caused by an uneven burning of the mixture which takes place after the spark plug fires. Right, Tech. And uh, said another way, some of the mixture at the far end of the chamber is fired by spontaneous combustion before the flame front from the plug gets there. As the flame front travels through the chamber, it generates heat and increases pressure. That compresses the unburned fuel mixture even more and makes it hotter. Radiant heat from the burning gases also heats up the fuel mixture until it ignites itself before the flame front reaches it. And when that happens, wham, a whole unburned charge fires at once, resulting in a quick, high pressure called detonation. As a matter of fact, Tom, detonation is the result of a small explosion of the unburned fuel mixture. It sets up shock waves that can actually make the combustion chamber walls vibrate. No wonder an owner can hear it. Yeah, and the pinging noise that you get from this detonation shows up during acceleration or continuous wide-open throttle operation, like when a car is lugging up a long, steep hill. I follow that, Joe. Now, confidentially, suppose an engine does detonate a little. Is that really going to be so hard on the engine? Or is it just another noise that bothers some owners? Well, mild detonation won't cause any damage, but... A severe case will cause loss of power, a waste of gasoline, and excessively high engine pressures and temperatures. Some of those temperatures and pressures can go sky high and lead to broken piston rings, broken and burned piston lands, and blown head gaskets. Oh, we can't have any of that. What causes detonation anyway? Well, there are three main causes, Tom. Spark timing that's advanced too far, excessive deposits in the chamber, and low-octane gasoline. Remember, you'll get the best performance when the spark is advanced until you hear little or no ping as the car accelerates from 10 to 30 miles an hour during wide-open throttle. And if you go beyond 4 degrees from the specified setting, I'll twist your neck. Okay, okay. I'll check timing like you told me. You'd better, my boy. Now, there's an even simpler fix that you might try. On some detonation cases... You can improve engine performance by just getting the owner to change to a different gasoline. That sounds almost too easy. How come that helps? Because quality of the fuel is a major factor in detonation, Tom. You mean regular or premium grade gasoline? Well, not in that sense exactly, Tom. Our engines are designed so that they'll perform very well with regular grade fuels. What I meant was a reliably refined gasoline of a satisfactory octane rating. You know, of course that all gasoline is rated by octane number, and the higher the octane number, the less tendency there is to knock. I get it. Now, here's something else. Regular grade gasolines vary as much as 10 octane numbers across the country, and you may find a 3 to 5 octane number variation in the same town. Oh, so changing to a different gasoline may really help. Right. Now... We know that low-octane gasoline and incorrect timing cause detonation. Remember, the distributor itself could cause poor timing, so you might have to test it. Besides that, engine deposits cause detonation. If there's still a combustion knock after changing gasolines and resetting the timing, look into the kind of driving being done. If it's mostly city traffic start and stop operation, take the car out on the highway where you can run it at higher speeds for a few miles. Uh, I still don't see where that's going to do any good. Listen, kid, that'll raise the temperature and at the same time increase the mixture flow into and out of the cylinders. Sometimes that's all you need to burn off and blow out the excessive engine deposits that pile up during city driving. What's more, it's the easiest way to cut down a knock tendency in an engine. Now, if an owner's been driving on the highway most of the time and his engine detonates... Retard the timing, 
but stay within four degrees of the setting specified for the model you're working on. And Tom, if retiring the spark doesn't eliminate detonation, in almost all cases, too low an octane fuel is being used. Right. And remember, the timing specified is designed to give top performance with average, regular-grade gasoline. Retarding the spark to wipe out detonation due to a low-octane gas may cause some loss of engine performance. Now, you might run into an owner who won't like that performance loss. So in that case, you may have to recommend a brand of fuel with a higher octane number. Okay. Anything else? Well, if the cooling system's not working right, localized hot spots will pop up in the cylinder head or block and set off detonation, so you'd better check that, too. Well, how do you feel about combustion knock conditions now, Tom? About 100% better, Joe. You sure covered the field. That he did, Tom. And there's still more help in this reference book. This book information, plus what Joe's already talked about, should put you in top shape. Now you can get rid of a condition that worries some owners. And when you can set a customer's mind at ease, you're a sense to keep all of his service business.